Welcome to the lecture series on control of gene expression. I'm Janine Post of the Developmental Bioengineering Group at the University of Twente. In this fourth lecture, I will talk about how post-transcriptional control fine-tunes gene expression. Illustrations in this video are based on the book Essential Cell Biology, Chapter 8. This is the fourth lecture in this series on gene expression control. In this lecture, I will focus on post-transcriptional modifications. We have already discussed in lecture two that mRNA is processed before being exported to the cytoplasm as a mature mRNA that can be translated. In addition, mRNA contains sequences that control their translation. Different types of RNAs exist that have very specific functions in regulating cellular processes, including mRNA stability and degradation. For example, regulatory RNAs control the expression of thousands of genes. Micrornas direct the destruction of target mRNAs. Small interfering RNAs protect cells from infections. And thousands of long non-coding RNAs may also regulate mammalian gene activity. In addition, mRNAs contain sequences in both 5' untranslated region and 3' untranslated region that can be recognized by spe specific repressor proteins. The binding of these proteins prevent the ribosomes to find the first AUG. When conditions change, this repressor is inactivated and translation of the mRNA can take place. A microRNA targets a complementary mRNA molecule for destruction. MicroRNAs are tiny RNA molecules, about 22 nucleotides in length, that are found in a cytosol and that control gene expression by base pairing with specific mRNAs and thereby reducing both the stability of the mRNA and its translation into protein. Each precursor MR miRNA transcript is processed to form a double-stranded intermediate, which is further processed to form a mature single-stranded microRNA. This microRNA assembles with a set of proteins in a complex called RNA-induced silencing complex, or RISC, which then searches for mRNAs that have a nucleotide sequence complementary to its bound microRNA. Depending on how extensive the region of complementarity is, the target mRNA is either rapidly degraded by nuclease within the RISC, or transferred to an area of the cytoplasm where other nucleases destroy it. Destruction of the mRNA releases the microRNA by bearing risk, which can then target additional mRNAs, thereby efficiently blocking production of the encoded protein. There are roughly 500 different microRNAs encoded in the human genome, which may regulate as many as one-third of our protein coding genes. We are only just beginning to understand the implication of these microRNAs in regulating gene expression, but have found that the microRNAs play a critical part in influencing many cell functions. Small interfering RNAs protect cells from infections. In this case, the risk system is used to eliminate foreign RNA molecules, in particular long double-stranded RNA molecules, which do not typically exist in the cell, but are the intermediates in the life cycles of viruses. These small interfering, or SI RNAs, are produced from double-stranded foreign RNAs during the process of RNA interference. Double-stranded RNAs from a virus, or transposable genetic element, are first cleaved by a nuclease called dicer. The, resultant, the resulting double-stranded fragments, known as SI RNAs, are incorporated into risks which discard one strand of the duplex and use the other strand to locate and destroy foreign RNAs that contain a complementary sequence. RNA interference, or RNAi, can also trigger transcriptional silencing. In this case, a single-stranded SI RNA is incorporated into an RNA-induced transcriptional silencing, or RITS complex, which uses the single-stranded SI RNA to search for complementary RNA sequences as they emerge from a transcribing RNA polymerase. The binding of the RITS complex attracts proteins that promote the modification of histones and the formation of tightly packaged heterochromatin. This change in chromatin structure, directed by complementary base pairing, causes transcriptional repression. 
Such silencing is used in plants, animals and fungi to hold transposable elements in check. And transposable elements are these small DNA segments that move from one genomic location to another. Recently, thousands of long non-coding RNAs have been discovered. Long non-coding RNAs are a class of RNA molecules that are more than 200 nucleotides in length. There are expected to be over 5,000 of these long non-coding RNAs in the human and mouse genomes. The role of most of these long non-coding RNAs is still unclear. Long non-coding RNAs can serve as scaffolds, bringing together proteins that function in the cell, same cell process. One long non-coding RNA is Exist, which is 17,000 nucleotides long and expressed in female cells, and plays a role in X chromosome inactivation in females. As described in chapter 7, RNAs can fold into three-dimensional structures that can be recognized by specific proteins. By engaging in complementary base pairing with other RNA molecules, these long non-coding RNAs can, in principle, localize proteins to specific sequences in RNA or DNA molecules. In the case of EXIST, enzymes and chromatin remodeling complexes are attracted that promote the formation of highly condensed heterochromatin thereby silencing the genes of the second X chromosomes in females. Another example of scaffolding is that of the RNA molecule in telomerase, the enzyme that duplicates the ends of eukaryotic chromosomes. Here it functions to hold its different subunits together. Thank you for watching. This was the last of four lectures on control of gene expression. If you have any questions, please email me.